Rage, the show where John Romano, Lee Priest, and I vent our frustrations with the world. Today we are here with Lee Priest, who just, I just woke him up from a slumber. He was in his sleeping bag outside in a tent, and I woke him up, and he agreed I to... I wasn't asleep. I was, out, I was outside feeding the magpies in the kookaburras. <laughs> <laughs> kookaburra, kookaburra. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, you, never seen, you never seen the Australian bird, a kookaburra? I, they're, 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 I thought that they were extinct, aren't they? No, no, hold on, my cat's playing with the phone. Get away, cat. No, the, the kookaburras are an Australian bird. We also have another Australian bird, Steve Blackman's favourite, a cockatoo. <laughs> have, you seen, <laughs> have you seen the cockatoo? Steve loves the cockatoo. They're yeah, I'm sure. The cockatoos in, uh, in Australia fly wild, though. Here we have, in the America, yeah. they're in cages, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, you're, the, the other bird you were talking about, isn't that a dangerous bird, the other one? The kookaburra, isn't that? They're like a native bird. They've got a big beak on them, and they catch snakes and smash the snakes and that against rocks and stuff and kill them and stuff. Yeah. yeah. i got a couple out here. I was just feeding them, and the magpies don't like them, so it was an all-in fight. So it's pretty good because my wife collects feathers, so there's lots of feathers out there. Is that the bird that you have to watch out for if you encounter them, that they can kind of, like, they'll attack you, that they'll attack people? The magpie... The magpie will attack you. Yeah, oh, the magpie will. Yeah, they're head. big birds. I am convinced that dinosaurs definitely were birds. They weren't reptiles. You know, I, I believe that theory. They're like too smart. Birds are way smarter than reptiles, you know. That's not the topic. Today's topic, though, is it, it does deal with intelligence, though. And the intelligence is how do you pick a person to listen to online? In other words, when you're looking for advice and you're looking for educational material, how do you vet out the, the idiots from the people who are actually knowledgeable? Back in the 90s and early 2000s, you read, art, you read the articles in the magazines, which were usually written by science guys, you know, doctors, you know, people who had you know, PhDs or even degrees from college that actually had some knowledge and had to go back and, into reference books and actually pull out you know, valid information. Nowadays, it seems like the people that everyone listened to are, are the guys with the biggest social media followings. Lee, if you were a bodybuilder coming up in today's world, how would you find your information and how would you know who to listen to and who not to listen to better? Well, I definitely wouldn't listen to anyone on fucking line, that's for sure, because like I said, <laughs> everyone thinks they're an expert online and you just have to sometimes look at the people who are talking shit. Oh, you've lost me again. That's because my cat uh, is attacking the camera. There's the guru. Extre Hi. That's the number one guru right there. Yeah. Listen to this one. This is This is... The pro destroyer. I can destroy pro. <laughs> okay, and there you go. No, but online, you don't listen to anyone really, unless if you were signed up to someone's website like Charles Glass or someone like that, people that have been there and done it, like you said, in the magazines, they were scientists, doctors, have done all the research. There's been plenty of studies done to back up what they're saying. Right. Now, every Tom, Dick, and Harry goes online and says, I say you should do this and try this diet and do this like yourself. You've done it. You've competed. You've done, been through all the different types sure. of diets, keto diets, this and that. So you know what you're talking about. You've got your background in all the pharmacology stuff and all this. Whereas now everyone's like, well, I did my first show and I did a low-carb diet <laughs> and I took these drugs so I know what I'm talking about. And then it's like I said, you look at their profiles and they look like shit. I don't know how many times I go. I've been, like I said, I, I do these seminars all over the world and I'll tell them the amount of gear I've used. Oh, you're lying. I know what you take. I've heard this. I said, well, I'm not. I'm the one that takes it. I know what I'm taking. <laughs> but yet they, they don't believe me. They're like, oh, you pros lie. I said, I'm not fucking lying. I said, I've been there, done it. I know what other pros have done. I'm telling you the truth. Right. No, no. But they, yet they believe the fucking Tom from fucking Cincinnati out the fucking back of the fucking wherever online <laughs> because Tom's never done anything. It will be like me fucking going to the Formula One and there's fucking Schumacher. Hey, Lee, come here. I'll show you how to drive a car. Nah, fuck off, Mike, you know, fucking Terry, <laughs> Terry, 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 who does burnouts over here from fucking, out fucking Glendale, California, he's going to show me how to drive, he knows all about it, he's got a big online following, old Terry, because he posts up burnout videos and how to fucking spin your car around, what could you tell me, Schumacher? That's what it's like, they believe, they believe anyone online just because, God knows why, because you look at their profile pictures, half of them have done nothing, and then it always amazes me, like, I'd be like you, Dave. You prepare people for shows. I'm sure when you got ready for your shows, you prepared yourself. Yeah. You did your diet. You yeah. did your cycles and whatever else. So I can't understand why these gurus who have all these clients getting them ready for a show, when they get ready for a show, they need a fucking guru. I'm like, 
how the fuck do you need someone to get you ready if you <laughs> try to get everyone else ready? So you can't get yourself ready, but you can tell everybody else what to fucking do. So you just look like a fucking hypocrite and a dickhead. So, right. but like I said, if I was preparing people for shows, I should be able to get myself ready because if I can give out all this advice on True. losing water, getting in shape, taking cycles, but yet I can't do that for me, your body, you should know the best. You can't do that. So if you're with somebody who's getting ready for a show, and, and you've got a, like I said, you've got a guru that's helping you, and he and he's got a guru, dump him, because if he can't get himself ready, he can't <laughs> fucking get you ready. As simple as that. He's just taking your fucking money and milking it, and you're like a little experiment. He's probably like, let me give fucking Michael this. Take that and take that. Did that work? Well, I won't try that when it comes time for me to get ready. So he's just little <laughs> guinea pigs, and that's pretty much all it comes down to. Right. So you got to go with someone reputable, like whether he's an ex-pro or someone that you know has got some sort of background or someone that has – like I said, it's been around for years and years and years, and you've actually seen his clients do well competing shows. You know, I'm not putting other people down. There are some out there that call themselves pro creators and stuff, and I haven't seen them create anything. I don't know if they could even create a fucking pancake. But, you know, it's like these people already had their pro cards. How can you say you're a pro creator? They had a fucking pro card already. Yeah. Take a fucking teenager and bring him all the way through and make him a fucking Olympia champion. Don't jump on the bandwagon once he's already got a fucking wealth of titles behind him, for fuck's sure. sake. What do you what do you think about these guys that actually have such huge followings and they actually might have knowledge themselves, but they have so many clients because of the way they market themselves that they actually have other people doing the coaching. So when you sign up with them, you're really not getting them as a coach. You're getting their their sub workers that kind of answer the emails and give out the programs. I mean, that might be the dumbest of all things that I've seen people actually get in, buy into. But the best way to do it is to know to know you're getting in. It's like when I used to do it, I'd have Skype calls and stuff so people would actually know it's me and I'd sit mm. there and you talk to them on Skype and go over to diets and stuff so it wasn't just someone say, okay, Lee, I'm going to use your name or we'll right. get something going and say it's you doing it, but I'll just send out all the stuff. I'll communicate with them and we'll just use your name to do it. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there doing that. So, you know, it's just They're crazy, not even but, hiding it, but, Lee. They're not hiding it. They're actually saying, okay, I have six coaches who work with me. You're going to be working with Joe Blow, who's coach number one, and he'll be overseeing your, your program. I'll talk to you, you know, once a year, and, and, and you'll just pay me, you know. That, and these people actually know it. They just want to be part of the, quote, team, you know, type of thing. Well, it's like I said, bodybuilding, when you break it down, I've said it over and over, is so basic. You want to get big and huge, train hard, rest, eat the food, put the food in, the food you need. If you want to get in the contest shape, okay, you start eating cleaner, you do a bit of cardio, you still train hard, you get the rest in, and then if you're going to go the chemical side, well, just experiment, because that's that's how we all learn, trial and error. People just need to trust in themselves. I don't know why it's become this big thing that people say, I need somebody to do this, I need somebody to do that. Maybe do it yourself, and then periodically, every month, have someone come check on you, see how you look. But generally, you just need someone to take you, go to the gym with, and push you through workouts. You can pretty much do everything yourself. Because like I said, if I went to somebody now or if I turned up at someone's house I didn't know, I said, look, I want you to do my diet, they don't know me from a bar of soap if I was a nobody. They'd be like, well, right. okay, um, what's your eating like now? And you tell them, they say, okay, well, let's try you on this. So they haven't got a clue. They're just trying you and experimenting. Sure. And then after a few weeks, they're going to go, well, how'd that work? You might be like, well, I'm still a bit fat. He'll go, okay, then let's cut a few of these carbs okay. out here. So like they haven't got a, you're, you're paying this person to do what you could have done yourself. So. People just need to trust in their own instinct because, as I said, there's no secret pill. There's no secret right. diet. It's like, I know, and you probably know too, like there might be one diet you use at one contest and you come in shredded. So next year you think, fuck, I've found a secret. I'm going to stick to this diet and this plan of supplements. It doesn't next work. year you do the exact same thing. You don't look <laughs> anywhere like it. So you've got to change it again. So yeah. your body's always changing chemically and whatever as you get older and stuff. So you've always got to change things up and to go to somebody who, like I said, doesn't know you. Okay, go for it. Oh, like I said, it's good to have someone like maybe a coach for the training side, like I said, go to the gym and push you to make sure you turn up for your workouts and get that sort of thing done. But when it comes to everything else, you just, it's trial and error. Like I said, if I go to somebody I've never met in my life, how does he know what drugs would react to my body? How does he know what foods are going to react? He's just going to do exactly what you're going to do. So you can do it yourself. Take notes of what you do and take notes of what you've eaten, the amounts you've eaten. Go do that for a couple of weeks, see what happens. If it doesn't work, start changing things around. But yet... Everybody thinks they've got to have a guru and this and that. And like I said, people are making hundreds of thousands of it. You see it on TV. Half these people you don't even know come on the news and say, I've got this new diet book out, this such and such diet. And when you break it down, a lot of them are just basic bodybuilding diets. Sure. But yet 
you put a fancy name to it and have a doctor come on TV and say, this is the diet you need, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. people, people fall for it. And sadly, like I said, you get these one guy now that goes, oh, look, at, look at those pictures of me when I was with muscle tech. I was so huge and fat and, like I said, bulked up. <laughs> Twelve weeks later, I'm shredded. I could, I could put that together and say, you want the secret diet I found? And I could start selling bullshit there. And all I did was the same thing I did every year. I just ate clean. I did two to three hours of cardio a day and trained my ass off. There's no fucking secret. No guru is going to be able to turn you into something if you don't want to do it yourself. Well, some guy contacted me. You know, he, he had a transformation. He was, uh, and his transformation is based on his anabolic steroid cycle. He wanted to come on our show and, and show his, tra and his transformation looked good, but he was, you know, he was just off season versus contest, and he wanted to promote it through the use of his special, you know, drug cycle, you know, knowledge. And so I, I, I didn't think there was the any best, merit the best, to that. The best, the best transformation I've ever seen in my life is fucking Optimus Prime. He's like this, and he goes, <laughs> and then he turns into a fucking truck. <laughs> A bumblebee, they're the yeah. best transformations. Yeah. Everybody else these days, you have to wonder because when we did them back then, you'd actually do a proper photo shoot with a photographer from a fucking magazine. <laughs> these days, we're fucking editing and Photoshop and shit. We don't know how much someone's transformed. People, people do the be before that. and after the same day nowadays because you just use Photoshop and filters and you change oh, yeah. it around. And change, change, change the lighting, get it this yeah. way, get it that way. Or the ones that will take a photo of themselves before a show and They'll be at their fucking best they can be, you know, they're full. And yet, when they put the picture up, they go, I'm having a low-carb day, very flat when this was taken. <laughs> no, no, that's the best you're going to look, dickhead, because you're a piece of shit. So <laughs> don't try and make it, don't make excuses that you're feeling flat and had a low-carb day. But like I said, there's so many out there. If you're going to look for one, to me, it'd be still, if I went into a gym and there's someone approachable there and you've seen someone that's competing in the gym and they've got a great physique, just politely go over and maybe ask them for some tips or say, listen, I'm getting ready for a show. I'm willing to pay you if you can help me out with a diet and stuff. That's the best way because that way if they're in the gym, you can see them face to face half the time and yeah. stuff like that. And you know what they've done. They've got some credentials behind them. But just picking anyone online, bloody hell. It's like you said, it's just a stab in the dark and they yeah. pretty much don't know anything more than you. Yeah. Well, you know what happens a lot too is that, you know, you get people who don't know anything. They, they, they're fresh. They've been doing this for, you know, two weeks and they don't know what to eat. They don't know what supplements they should be taking. They come to someone you know who who's has a big social media following. More than likely, they have a bad experience with it. I get a lot of these people who come to me afterwards. Well, a lot of them too. I know a yeah. lot of them just go online and somebody wants a diet. They just go search in the archives and do cut and paste and just send someone a diet from. Let me go back to bodybuilding.com right. years ago in their diet section. They'll cut and paste the diet from there. or cut yeah. and paste the diet from muscle and fitness archives and go <laughs> here you go. Well, it's like I said, I mean, you could go online and type in bulking up cycle and there's tons of cycles let me just copy that and send it to the guy you know right. it's a quick easy money for doing nothing that's oh, what yeah. a lot of them do but those people are frauds and they always stay they, they always fall apart eventually because what happens is invariably they, they encounter a, a person they're working with who has a problem or something's not working properly and they have no mm -hmm. idea how to troubleshoot anything because they just don't have the, the, the educational or the knowledge background or the well, experience that, well, that's, that's for that the, matter. Well, that's the thing. Like I said, if you're working with someone, you know, you're smart enough to get their blood work so you know what's going on and stuff like that. Whereas I'm pretty sure 90-odd percent of people out there would never ask to check any of their clients' blood work, their blood pressure, right. this or that, or medical checkups. They just go hell for leather and say, here, take this, take that, <laughs> and eat this and eat that and have no history of their medical background at all. So, you know, I'd always tell people when I get them ready, go to the doctor, get the blood work done and this sort of stuff. So I got some idea and stuff like that. But these days, like you said, 90% or more of them online now are just, like you said, they've been online themselves. They just started reading stuff online and yeah. they might've done a show. They mightn't have done a show. They've talked to Harry at the gym and <laughs> Harry's given them some advice and now all of a sudden they're experts. <laughs> Although, you know, I know guys like that who don't even look that good, who, who studied so hard and really made themselves knowledgeable, and they're actually pretty good coaches. And, Dave, and after, Dave, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take you putting yourself down like this. Come on, Dave, you still look okay. Come on, you know, it's like you don't look, you don't look <laughs> no, that. You don't look that there bad. are there are guys out there who actually who don't look great, who who are great coaches because they put a lot of effort. And then there's guys that look amazing out there who are the biggest frauds, like you said. They don't even know what they're doing. They just are using their maybe reputation or their or their the accolades that they've achieved in bodybuilding to try to make money as a coach. And those guys are not necessarily great coaches. Just like the best football players sometimes don't make the best football play coaches. And sometimes the mediocre players actually be are become better coaches. So there are guys out there that are educating themselves and working to be good coaches. 
I think it, the, the problem is how do you vet the people out? How do you see through all the camouflage? I think, like I, said, I, think, I think it's just easy. Like I said, if, the best way is, like I said, if you can do it in your own gym because then you can actually see them online. Okay, if you go online, I guess you can go through a history of their clients, who they've worked with and what they've achieved. And then even, I don't see anything wrong with sending them an email saying, listen, I'm thinking of working with the guy you're working with. What's right. he like? Just try and get some information like sure. that. Because just, just going in blind word of mouth sometimes is just like, okay, because uh, this guy could be like, he can you recommend me to people, recommend me to people, and right. he hasn't done shit. So I'd, I'd just see what some of his clients have achieved and what they've done, how they look. You know, I'm sure he'll get referrals and you know, some people, if someone's really happy with their coach and they've done well, they're going to be more than happy to write online, this guy's changed my life, he took me from this <laughs> to that. They're going to put up their progression pictures yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, it just takes time to look around. But like I said, don't go for the very first one you see and this and that. Because like I said, if you were to go on any sort of bodybuilding forum now, I bet probably 80% of the people on there would tell you they could get you ready for a contest and oh, <laughs> shit sure. like that. So. Did during your career, did you ever have people come up to you and say, hey, Lee, I, I can help you get into better shape. Why don't you work with me? Uh, only two. One was Honey Rembod, uh -huh. and I never never worked with him. No? He gave me, like I said, he gave me a big list of supplements, but I never took him. But he thought <laughs> I did. That's when, that's when Mike, your blonde, was living with me, and we had a fun time I'm thinking Honey for Oh, that's a long time ago, yeah. And then I was going to work with Neil Hill for a while, but then I didn't end up competing. But he just gave me a diet, like I said before. It was a pretty good diet. It was pretty much just like I was doing before, clean dieting. And yeah. I used to laugh about it, though, because in my diet, Neil gave me um, oatmeal and stuff with 16 blueberries. And I said, I can't have 14 or 17. <laughs> had to be 16. And when I told Flex Lewis I get blueberries, he's like, what the fuck? He goes, I don't get blueberries and stuff like that. So I was like, <laughs> Yeah, but like I said, it's, uh, that's when he was starting off. That's in the very beginning when he was starting off that, um, was it FYT3 or some some training thing too. So, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, but like I said, when you look at Harney, like I said, Harney's a great guy. We used to get on great many fun times. But if when you look back then to where Harney started, it's like, okay, Harney did, I think, one or two local shows and stuff. And then you'd hang around the bodybuilders. He'd always come to my place for barbecues and hang out at the gym, the next thing he's gone from like computer geek to fucking, I'm training fucking Ronnie Coleman. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, I remember this guy, you, you probably wouldn't know him, there used to be a guy down the Rose Cafe and where um, Max Fossil was, there's that little car park there, a guy used to just valet cars and every day you walk past him, fuck, he'd hold you up for half an hour. Lee, what do you think about this training and this method uh, and no. this and that? Within 12 months, the cunt was a personal trainer at Gold's Gym. Oh, right, he went really? Parking, he went, he went from parking cars to training people. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my well, I figured, God. Well, I figured with me walking past, Flex Wheel will go past, and everyone, Rico and Charles Glass, there's a wealth of knowledge within 12 months on how to get people ready for shows. So That's called education. That was four years of college well, you did I right there. You, he, could, he, he could park your car and give you a workout now. So. What was the guy's <laughs> name? You remember his name? I can't remember. I can't remember. If I, if I go on by the look of him, I think his name was Juan Jose. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the more training culture but, of Venice not now. Not being yeah. racist, but that was just the culture of Venice. There was a lot of Mexican people parking cars, okay? <laughs> yeah, talk about working your good way thing, up. Good thing, good thing there wasn't a wall or we wouldn't have fucking been able to come and park the cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, I guess the answer to the question is, you know, do your research. Because, like I said, if you just pick the, the, the flash in the pan person who's got the best social media following, you probably won't even get them as a coach. And you know what? They probably won't really know what to do anyway. So... Make sure you, you talk to clients out there that have worked with other people, like Lee said. Make sure you, you like research you said, too, the person. You've got to make sure it's actually them. See if you can get some video time with them. Because I actually had it happen to me twice. A guy actually came up to me and goes, Hi, Lee, I'm such and such. I've been working with you for getting ready for this thing. And I'm like, I haven't got a clue who you were. Oh, so my God. This, there was actually somebody out there saying they were me. And I <laughs> talked to you on Twitter all the time. Thanks for the diet. And I'm like, I'm sorry. to I don't know who you are. He's like, what the fuck? So, oh, that's, so that that's terrible, too, man. So, if you are going to get someone, you've got to make sure it's them because I remember a couple of times I used to, I tried to get LeePriest.com and somebody owned it and somebody was using it, pretending it was my site. So you really have to, like I said, look in and make sure it's actually them. And like I said, if you can get some FaceTime, is the best way. Yeah. I actually signed up with Lee Priest for, for, for a training routine and I actually wound up getting his cat as my coach. I didn't realize it, but, look what, yeah, but your look cat was coaching you. me. Look, for six look months. how good you look now. Look how good you look now. You've had a few. Look what happened. Yeah, I felt. lost all my muscles working few. with your cat. I want a <laughs> couple of couple of couple of shoulder surgeries and all this yeah, sort of stuff. I was I was wondering why I was eating salmon all day and and you know I should have known it was your cat giving me the diet not you. 
You would have given me some know. burgers or Kentucky the rumors, Fried Chicken. The rumors, the rumors were when I said I'm working with Dave Plum, everyone like, oh, that cunt's a pussy. So, you know, I was just, <laughs> I was just, I was just trying to help you out. <laughs> you, well, are, we, you are what you eat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I appreciate you waking up and, uh, and coming on Iron Rage. Uh, I, I, I got him the last minute, so uh, he's in pretty – you do well in the morning, though. You've always been an early morning guy. Yeah, early morning riser. I'm still young enough that when you wake up, i got a hard on still. So <laughs> when, You're getting older, Dave. At what point does that stop? Does that stop later on when you get in your 50s? I don't know. I, uh, not for me, but evidently <laughs> I, I get a lot of people uh, uh, texting me and asking got kids. me. You've got kids. You don't even know what that fucking is. I still got Jesus. kids coming. A, yeah, I'm, I'm still that, producing that, them. So. You're like this. Babe, I'm ready to go. Wah, wah. Wah. Huh. Fucking mood killer. I'm fucking Italian, man. We, we, got, we, have good, uh, we have good sex drives. What, but what I have that guys mean? all What's the that time. Mean? You eat fucking lasagna. What the fuck is that? That's mean? right. I mean, I, but Lee, I have people all the time who contact me and tell me they can't. They're 25 years old. They can't get an erection. They can't have sex with their girl. They, 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 they're depressed. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I never had that happen to me my whole See, life. I never, I, you know, I never had that problem. I was never a huge test user. I didn't really. People said, "Oh, you must love tests." I was never a huge test lover. But two, to this very day, every time I did a cycle, I never did anything after the cycle. I never did. Clomid, HCG, no. because I actually hated hated being on this shit. When I come off, I come off. It's like, fuck it, I ain't taking nothing. So yeah. people yeah. are like, Lee, what's your after cycle regimen? I'm like, fucking stop taking needles, you can't. I don't fucking take anything else. <laughs> They're like, well, how much HCG should I take? I'm like, how the fuck should I know? When I come off the cycle, I go back to my other fucking anabolic preference, McDonald's. Right. <laughs> so that's like, funny. That's it. Yeah, so I, you, I, you know what? You're an anomaly. Down, People shouldn't even listen to you because you're such a genetic oh, freak. Okay. You didn't need a lot of steroids. You didn't. You didn't do any <laughs> PCTs. You train most of the year naturally, and you still put muscle on. So you're you're well, definitely I was, an anomaly. I always found that's what I always found that's what worked best for me. But sadly now there could be young kids out there the same. And when I tell them, look, if you want to take the gear, fine, take it. But yet start maybe small and see if that it works. If it works. Yeah. Like I said, there's young kids out there now starting on two grams of test and this. And I said, why are you starting so high? Back to, well, fucking Terry online told me to fucking do it. You know, <laughs> and there we go back to the coaching <laughs> well, online, right? Of course, you, of course you're buying it off Terry. Terry's got a nice new fucking Corvette because you're buying so much yeah. too. So, That's true. You know? Yeah, but you, you, but people have to understand you are a hyper responder. You could take a lot less than most people and probably get way more results. Plus, you train hard. You ate right. So you had, you had a lot of good things going for you. You had good genetics. And so... I understand, you know. Not, the, not to mention, not to mention, I'm handsome too. That's right. <laughs> I think it's the tattoos. <laughs> the tattoos. I I heard a rumor that the tattoos actually have steroids. They're long acting steroids. It is. It is. It is. It actually just dissolves. It's finally this bit of fucking Decca Drablin's finally soaking That's in. That's right. It's, it's, you're pump, absorbing pump all, that, all the, uh, the drugs. This fucking this fucking prima they put in pretty deep over here. It's <laughs> taking a long time to absorb. Don't laugh. That's how they say, That'll how, probably how do, be the next get, thing they come drugs, up with. And you get drugs through customs, just fucking put it in your tattoos. There you go. <laughs> Steroid infused tattoos. That'll be the next big thing on the market. What do you think I got? What do you think I got so many for? I'm an abuser. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, thank you so much. Have a great day. I appreciate your input. And listen, take uh, take Lee's advice. Do your research out there, and make sure before you hire a coach that you know who you're hiring. Make sure you're working with them and not some assistant. And you know what? Make sure you click personality-wise, because if you don't, it's never going to work. Take that advice for what it's worth. I'm Dave Palumbo for Lee Priest for another edition of Iron Rage.